guys how are you all doing it's your girl cindy welcome back again to another video if you are new here hi my name is cindy thank you so much for clicking to watch this video so here is the update of my last video if you haven't seen it yet i'm gonna pin it in the comment so you can please check it out so you would understand you know this video now please let's recap a black young man was walking through a neighborhood, his own neighborhood, and a group of white men stopped him. Like they were questioning him. Who is he? What is he doing? You know, in the neighborhood, you know, they were harassing him to the point that one of them brought out a pew pew. Yes. The video went viral on TikTok. I'm sorry I could not, you know, share this video because I mean, YouTube wouldn't allow me, but the video is trending on TikTok. Now, TikTokers have done what only them can do. They have, you know, um, found the men. Okay. So we are going to, you know, hear from them from these videos that I have put together. There is a new update and a lot of people are coming out this Saturday for, you know, a walkthrough around the neighborhood. So please, Stay with me, guys. Let's just hear from these TikTokers what they are saying, what their findings are, because this is totally unacceptable. Black people just want to live. They just want to exist. They just want to be free. I mean, this is 2024. How could you see a human being working in a neighborhood? It doesn't matter. I could decide to walk through a neighborhood as long as I'm harmless. As long as I don't, I'm not threatening anyone around the neighborhood. This is 2024 because this is, this is absolutely like, I don't know what to say. People are angry with the video. But of course, there are some white people that are saying, no, that is our neighborhood. Do not invade. Do not come into our space and all of that. Anyways, I'm going to let these videos roll so we all can get the full tea. And I'm going to show you some screenshots of comments. Check these videos out. So I have an update about this story. For those of you that don't know, this young man was walking around his neighborhood after the hurricane. And these men that you see followed him, harassed him, and asked him, do you live there? What are you doing there? Why do you keep walking past our house? One of the guys has been identified on Facebook as Steven Karenga, and they are planning a walk through Steven's neighborhood this Saturday at 9 a.m. So if you're in the Sarasota area and you want to come out and support this young man and let them know that racial profiling is not going to be tolerated, go to that march. So I have an update about this story for those of you that don't know. This young man is sad, honestly, because the guy was just walking through. And it's neighborhoods like those, like I have them where I live, that they're very pretentious and very whatever. And it really doesn't matter who they are. They just are who they are. And the fact is, is that there's no reason for it. If he wasn't damaging in property, if he wasn't running on people's property, if he wasn't stealing property, if he wasn't doing all that kind of stuff. There was no reason for that. And the guy who went into his car to get a gun. This is why Americans need, what you call it, stronger gun laws. Because honestly, where I live, it, you have to go through a whole entire procedure to go like, to get one. Like, can nobody go walk through things now? Can nobody go do things? just because people feel that they're entitled to go and do this kind of stuff. It's sad, it really is. I found another one, actually, I found two. Well, just to make sure you know what I'm talking about, this is a story of a black teen who flirted with a white woman and she got very offended, told her husband, and then a lynch mob came after him. This situation could have been avoided if it wasn't for racism. That's truly all it comes down to. Like I said, we'd be identifying bike guy. Hello, Rom Nobrega. I was also able to identify the wife. Hello, Aaron Edinburgh. I had already identified Stephen Craig in the first video. We got Jeffrey in the second video. You remember Jeffrey's one who said, you've been walking by my house like four times, and then later on was like, oh, I know what you're doing, you're race baiting. Uh, quick question. Why is it always the people who accuse people of color of race baiting, why are they always the same people who are actively engaging in racism when they say it? I, 
It's not race baiting to point out racism. All it does is tell people that when racism occurs, you don't care. I don't like a lot of the language that they use. Someone can't bait you into being racist. Someone can't provoke you into being violent. Somebody doesn't walk around arrogantly to make you want to stalk them. The reason you're attaching those words to all of these normal human things that you would never say about a white person is because, and you gotta, you gotta hear me out on this, you're racist. <coughs> Stephen Correga of Sarasota, Florida, known for stalking this black teen for merely existing and walking in his neighborhood. Oh yeah, I forgot. They also added laughing. He was laughing too. That's why he went to reach for some sort of weapon to hit him with. Well, we've got an update on Chestain here. Apparently, he has been suspended by the London Stock Exchange Group until further investigation. I'm, this is great news, but I'll celebrate when we actually have some results. Just like that last post about a criminal investigation into him, I will celebrate when they actually, you know, get rid of the employee who could potentially harm other employees there. It's up to them, not me, but I'll keep you updated. What are you talking about? He was only suspended. You telling me you get caught pulling a firearm on somebody unprovoked, following somebody in their own neighborhood unprovoked, with your whole gang of buddies in, a, in two cars, unprovoked, on camera, get out your car, point at the guy, say, I got something for you, and then walk to the passenger side, pull your firearm unprovoked. Dude's still walking away the whole time recording the entire interaction. And he's been suspended? What other investigation is needed? I, I don't, I really just don't understand, bro. I don't get it. It would be different if this was like something alleged. But it's not. The whole event was caught on camera. I don't, I really just don't understand it, man. If he's suspended, does that mean he's still getting paid? All of them, everybody involved needs to be fired. Point blank, period. But him specifically, is he still getting paid? This is outrageous. Y'all keep posting updates, man. Go check out that person's page on the last video. She got all the updates. In this video, I'm going to be giving you all Steven's wife's side of the story about what happened. She wants her side to be heard. In all fairness, I'm going to share what I've seen and you all could be the judge. This screenshots are from Kiki Bradshaw Facebook page. She reached out to the wife and the wife decided to answer her. I went back and searched for the wife page. And I think at this point it's probably been disabled because I wasn't able to find it. I'm not going to read all of the screens. You can pause and read as you want to, but I'm just going to paraphrase about what she's basically saying. Kiki jumps right to the point asking her why did her husband feel the need to have a pew pew and the wife basically responded that he doesn't even own one and does she know the whole story and she's also stated that her family is now being harassed because of this whole thing in these messages she's basically saying that how this whole thing started was he approached a young mom that was standing in the driveway with her baby he asked her if she had a man and she mistaken what he had said. He asked her again. And the wife is alleging that he started walking towards this individual's the garage. The lady ran in the house talking about, no, no, she has a husband. And she was scared, basically. And then she eventually told her husband what happened. And that's when I guess the whole pursuit or how this whole thing was started here. She said that he was just basically walking back and forth and that her husband never pulled the, you know what here. She basically says that her husband comes from Brooklyn and he has multicultural friends here. She talks about how everyone was nervous because there was kids outside and there was a stranger walking back and forth. And that he didn't answer anybody's question until, I guess, the cops came over or once the cops got there. Here, she's basically saying that the accusations of the husband pulling out a pew-pew um, is not right. And that the young man was being provoking by walking around and just staring at everybody. 
And then she basically said that she understood that her words has no power against this young man and that she understands why. I would like to know why she understands why, but she understands why. And that she's going to defend her family because no one has the right to harass her kids. And then they had a nine minute phone call. I'm not sure what that was about. But yeah, so that was the wife's side of the story. This is getting worse. The mom just released a different four minute video of these people following this young man and harassing him. Go to the mom's page and watch that video right there, the very first one. And the things that they were saying to him was crazy. One of the guys said, well, you back here walking around by the cattle or something like that. Why you back here? What is it that you want? And then one of the other guys was like, uh, you wanted to attack my wife or something along that lines he was saying. And then one of the guys was like, oh, you are trying to make this about race and that's not what it is. It To me, it was just the way that they were talking to him and the things that they were saying to him. According to the mom, this is the mom's page. She has multiple videos, I guess, where he kind of recorded in increments this whole interaction. So now I'm trying to figure out exactly how long were they following this young man the mom made an updated post and she said that he's 18 she's he is her child and he lives there she said that as he was walking around like more neighbors were in their yard seeing what was happening and clearly nobody did anything if you want to read this you can go to her page this is getting even more disgusting. And yesterday, Steven, he had his day. Now, I got to move on to the other two because this is just ridiculous. Sarasota, Florida used to be a sundown town, and it probably still is. There is documented history that shows that Sarasota was a sundown town. I came across this paper that talked about Sarasota residents not wanting black residents to be able to be on the beaches of Sarasota and what they were subjected to if they went into white neighborhoods or wealthy neighborhoods in Sarasota. Just by traveling outside of black neighborhoods, black residents in Sarasota face extreme violence and harassment for being in areas that wasn't designated for them. They had to petition and really fight to get access to certain places like the beach and other parts of the town. The beaches on Sarasota stayed segregated well into the 1960s. I know we're in 2024, but y'all, if y'all do the math, that's not that long ago. I feel like racial history and racial prejudices in the area just don't die and go away. So if Sarasota was a sundown town and it wasn't that long ago, it's probably still a sundown town, but I don't know. What do y'all think? So I'm being accused of race baiting because I have been reporting on this story. This person is in my inbox. Pause to read. Here's what I said back to the person. Excuse the typos. But what I need for people to understand is that these men had no business approaching this team in the first place. They don't own the sidewalk. They don't own the neighborhood. It's the audacity of it all. And then to demand an answer. In the video, he clearly said, I'm from the neighborhood. And the guy was like, so does that, does that mean you live here? This could all be so simple. Yes, it could all be so simple if y'all go back to y'all house where y'all were and leave this team alone. These guys could have been anything. They could have been diddlers. Like they could have abducted, abducted this guy. Like he don't know them. He doesn't have to answer these men and for them to demand an answer. If they felt threatened, if they felt like he did something, if they felt like he didn't belong there, call the police why you go and round up a posse to approach a young man i'm sorry a teen 
And people are like, oh, this has nothing to do with race. This has nothing to do with race. And I'm sorry if you still live in that delusional world. Yes, everybody is not a racist. I am not saying that these guys are racist. I don't know them. But what I do know is if these pictures were reversed and these were three black men and this was a young teen that those three guys would have been arrested already. And let's just be real about that. And this is an experience that many of us in America has had over and over again. We've seen it with our own eyes. Like we know how these stories end, depending on who's the perpetrator and who's the victim. As a mom of five black boys, I know what it's like to see your child go through something because of the color of his skin and feeling so helpless on what to do. Knowing that with one wrong move or saying the wrong thing could end with his life being taken or him seriously hurt. Overall, I think this team handled himself really well because had it been somebody else, this thing would have been a lot bigger than what it already is. So my call to action to any of you who are allies or anything like that, like when you see something and something looks wrong, like say something. In one of the videos, as he, as the young teen was walking, there was a lady with the kid kind of walking by them. And he was like, you know, you guys are causing a disturbance. You guys are basically blocking the sidewalk and this lady's trying to get through with her kids and you can kind of tell in that moment it's almost like he tried to low-key reach out to help to her and she just kind of like nervously laughed and kept walking not to say that it was her business to do anything but read the room people i know it's uncomfortable to have to talk about race-related issues and scenarios. I know it's uncomfortable to some people, but for a lot of us, it's our reality. And even though it may not be you that is perpetuating the, the racism, your peers are, your family members are, other people that you know in your circle still are because we're still having these issues today. So stay out of my inbox talking about race baiting because at the end of the day they i don't think none of these people are police and they have no business in this young teen's face and if you don't like it go pray about it okay bye i have a consequence update for the neighborhood creepers steven Correga. if you remember he was the member of the lynch mob that was most unhinged the one who went into his car to grab some sort of weapon to use it on the teen for simply smiling and laughing and doing literally nothing wrong. After this teen has told this group many times to stop following him and to stop harassing him and to leave him alone and that he does in fact live there. But even if he didn't live there, this type of behavior is not only inappropriate, but deeply racist. And it is shocking and aggravating for all of us to see. It is also very frustrating when they try to gaslight and try to discredit the victim and doubling down, tripling down on their behavior and actions by doing so shows us that they've really learned nothing and it is not our responsibility to teach them. So instead, all we'd like to see are some sort of consequences for these actions to make it clear to everyone, including the people in Sarasota, that this type of behavior, it will not be tolerated. So without further ado, here's your update. Stephen Correga has been fired from the London Stock Exchange Group because they do not support his racist action. Thank you for that swift investigation and validation for that teen and what he went through. The victim who went through this is on Instagram. Go to his page right now. Show him support. Show him love. He's a rapper. Go support his music. He's a great guy. I've talked to him a lot. You'll love him. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I've been waiting to do this all week. Let me try this again. Steven Gregor has been fun. Look, here comes the consequence, 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 consequences of my actions chasing me right now. I found the fourth one. That's right. There's a fourth member of the lynch mob in Sarasota. That's four men total that they thought was appropriate to send after a teenager for simply communicating with one of their wives while being black.
the wife overreacted because of her implicit bias and deeply rooted racism. I could assume. And it ended with Stephen Craig pulling a weapon out of the car, which they deny is a gun. But at this point, I don't believe him because they said it's not a gun. Because they said it isn't, I don't believe him for that reason. So I think maybe it could be. In fact, probably is. Anyway, here's the fourth guy. Found him. Hello, Stephen Burrows. We got two Steves here. Well, we all know what you're here for. Give us this face and the sound. Now, I took some screenshots of comments. Of course, every of my video, I tried to bring some comments so you guys can read and see what other people are saying or what other people said in regards to that video. Okay, so this is what we do here. Now, on your screen are some of these comments. Please pause to read if you want to. Personally, I love the fact that people are coming out this Saturday to go around that neighborhood because make it make sense. That young black man is a human being. That man that brought that the pew pew had no right. I don't know why people find it very easy to take a life. The black man was harmless. He was only walking in search of service to contact his girlfriend. And then the white man was saying, oh, he did this to my wife. He did that to my wife. Trying to cook up a story to back himself up. I said in my last video, it is given a material. Now, mind you, before some of you would say, oh, Cindy, why are you saying all this? There are some white people who are allies that are also fighting for this, you know, young man to get justice. So let's just, let's just say the truth. This is not nice. This is 2024. Let people be free. Just let, unless... If the person is threatening the people living in the neighborhood, then you can call the police. But as long as this person is harmless, I see no reason why a group of white men would, you know, harass him. And I love the fact that the black man was, you know, was bold enough. He was, he was fearless. Okay, he had to record everything. Wow, let's do better. This is 2024. Let's do better. Anyways, you guys, like I said in my last video that I'm going to bring updates, you know, so you guys can, you know, follow the story up. I thought I should bring these videos here. And video credit goes to these content creators that are doing amazing job to make sure that the black young man gets justice thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like this video share comment and of course come back on another video i'm gonna see y'all in my next one y'all stay blessed bye